Good evening. I wrap scene with your spider ETF stock market wrap up. And this wrap up is for Thursday, the 29th of December, 2022. A couple of things. This morning for all my subscribers, I'm talking to paid subscribers that uh, take my spider ETF stock subscription. I told them, hey folks, I'll tell you what I think the pros are doing, but let's understand the real pros. They're not going to trade right now. The noise in the market isn't worth it. They'll go on and do what they have to do. We're hosting a big party at our home tonight, I can tell you that. I'm already, for all purposes, closed my books, uh, and I'll put out my updates for my clients, but I'm done. Today I was watching TV and doing other things than looking at the market. I'm on vacation for all purposes until this weekend when I'll put out the weekly review of everything you're seeing here. And then Tuesday, it's back to work as a normal time. But trying on the last trading day of the year to do something, why? What I've learned in my five decades in this industry gets you in trouble. You've either had a good year, you haven't had a good year. As you know, there's a lot of, now the tax selling has been going on. And remember, if you sell anything now to take your loss, you cannot buy it back for 30 days without a tax consequence that could be negative. So the people that have sold over the past 30 days, be it Tesla's, other things, they won't buy it back until 30 days from there if they want to own that holding again and not have uh, a regular income tax. That's how it'll be uh, viewed on the tax records. Talk to your accountant, not me on that. All right, in Tesla, we're getting a bounce. It's overdue. Look what this market has done. Already traders, well, it's overdone, that's it. It probably bottomed itself out. That looked like a bottom to you. It could be, but I don't see it. I see a bounce in a market that's bearish. I see a market that ran its Bollinger Band, stepped away yesterday. Now the Gorilla Glue trade, as I told you and went into detail yesterday's over. You have two days where you now are away from that number. Even if it comes right back to it, it's not hit the Gorilla Glue trade again. It would have to go through the whole process. So the big selling wave, as I see it, is over in this, but the bearishness hasn't ended. Now, I think the most important tool you can have in your trading arsenal is learning how to work with Bollinger Bands with the slow stochastic. I call it enhanced Bollinger Bands. At the end of this, there'll be a video on it. Look at it. Learn from it. Take the course. It's inexpensive. It's going to stick with you. And I mean stick like glue with you once you learn what it is. And it's easy to recognize. It's easy to see what the trade is doing. And suffice to say, until this red line closes over 21, these rallies, there's a number that I teach in the course that the trade is looking to sell into. It's simple. It's right there. You plot it on your chart and it's instantly there for you each day. And that's what I think they'll do. They'll try to sell it to see what the market's made of on the bounce. When I go to LIT, embedded reading, each of these bounces have been sold. You here too broke away from the Gorilla Glue trade. It doesn't mean you can't go lower. It's just not going to be every day with a lower and low day. That's basically what happens. Apple also broke away from that. Now, it started breaking away here from that. Then it went back, tested the Bollinger Band bounce. But there's nothing bullish. Not one of the charts we've just gone through. Not one of them. So there's a bottom has formed in the markets. Could a bottom form? Of course a bottom could form. Has it formed? Plain English, no. Is the trade probably going to sell these markets? Yes. So this is still nothing there. What about the Santa Claus rally? Well, what about it? It didn't take place. I know you're going to tell me, Ira, you can rally tomorrow and you can go up the first two days of January, get a thousand point rally, and he did show he was just late. Okay. Make those three events happen. Those three days. We'll see if that occurs. You have the embedded reading here. Now, the good news for Avatar, it did do over a billion dollars around the world. So it is going to be a profitable movie. Is it enough to save the movie theaters? I doubt it. And by the way, now it, as this ends, they don't have another good series of movies. So companies like AMC, folks, I'm warning you. This thing can go to depths you can't imagine. Watch the charts, though. It's not an investment. Play the chart. 
In XLF, a bear market rally that carried to the 18-day average of closes. It had lost the embedded reading all the way back here. When it lost that reading, and this is the beauty, it's, it's one of the things that you learn in the course. When you lose the reading, a close over 21, not 20. Watch, out you wanna be. The odds favor now you're going to this first, to the 200-day average, it's the closest main moving average. Maybe you can get to the 18th, it doesn't have to, maybe you can get there, boom. It's a bear market rally. Now you're gonna say, could that be a bottom? It could. Will the trade buy the market? Well, you closed over the 18 day average. In theory, they could be buying it on the close today, putting a stop at 33.78, risking about 50 cents, and looking to see if they can get up to the upper band. Is it worth it? I have my doubts. In XLI, here is an oversold market in a downtrend fighting against that line in the sand, the 18-day average of closes. Semiconductors still with an embedded reading. No, I'm looking for more crossovers here. I'm looking for the 18-day average to get under the 200 and the other, and I'm looking for this market to fall even further. I'm not looking for a bottom in it yet. In the home builders, Okay, you know, we had stories this week with people saying they're looking for the home builders to do well. I don't know why. I realize the pent up demand, but mortgages went up again today, if you, if you read the index, and they're back near, what, 6.5%? Do you think people are gonna be taking out a lot of mortgages at 6.5%? I have my doubts. Have home prices crashed? They haven't. Year over year, if you just saw the numbers, you're still up nearly 9%. Okay, month to month you're falling, but year over year you're still higher. In, in most areas, not every area, obviously. Um, when you look at what the market's got here in the energy sector, higher, high, lower, low. What, what's going on? Why is this market not just running up or down? The market wants to be bullish off Chinese demand once this wave of COVID ends in China. We don't know how big the wave is. We don't know how serious things are. We're not getting any ideas out of the Chinese government on how many people are in the factories working. What are they doing? What do the exports look like? We need a heck of a lot more data. What we know is they opened their market. It's over. Uh, President Xi, once the party Congress ended and Shortly afterwards, the demonstrations in big cities where people took to the streets, something you never see in China. That was the end of the game. They listened. He listened. I give him credit for that. Uh, it isn't worth fighting people over. You have to stay in your home because of COVID. Get vaccine. Jump with the West in medicine. He won't do that part. We keep offering, and so do other nations, Western medicine. They're going to stay with their less effective uh, vaccine. Okay, but it's better than nothing. In GLD, the market is stuck right here, but it's still pointing that it could be reaching up for the 169.87 level. A lot of people think that the dollar will be weaker to start the year. And as that happens, as our economy weakens, uh, that you'll kick up the metal markets, that they have the potential off the end of the COVID eventually in China and ideally a weaker dollar, we'll see. Copper, well, as much as it wants to go up, you need to get past the COVID wave in China to see that the factory work is happening, that materials such as copper are gonna be consumed, that goods are being produced, infrastructure taking place again, the government's got a lot to do. But I think that the big selling wave in the market is over. In TLT, I'm still in the bear camp in this. Now, I'm looking for these markets to embed this in BND yet. In the dollar, you had an outside day up yesterday and you took the low out. You don't do that often on charts. But when you do it, pay attention. Unless you instantly went back up, uh, be it tomorrow or Tuesday, over this high, the odds favor that you're going to get down to 27.76. In FXE, you had an outside day down. You took out the high. You're probably going to the upper Bollinger Band in the market. You put it together and you get a game plan. And that's what we want to do. It was a big day in the marketplace of green. Take a look behind me. A lot of green on this market. That's to be expected. It's year end. You've been falling apart. You're getting a bounce. Okay. 
Is that the Santa Claus rally? Not to, not the traditional rally, not by a long shot. So I said, learn the enhanced Bollinger Bands. Learn how to work with them. Pay attention here. Do yourself a favor. Get the course. Look at it over the next week or so. Learn. And my advice is see if it applies to your style of trading. I'm I Rapstein. You have a great day. And I will see you all over the weekend with our weekend review of weekly charts on all this. Take care. Welcome. I'm I Rapstein. And I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. And on a chart, it will offer on the top part resistance, on the bottom support, and the ideas the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches onto that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that I do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.